Hey guys, it's Andre here from Verge Magazine with my two friends, Matt and Sam. Uh, we are, at the moment, calling this the F1 Alternative Podcast with Verge Magazine. Um, now, for those who don't know about more about much about Verge, I'm sure that you've seen us around the actual track, um, track behind the scenes recording. We just did a interview recently with Lando and um, and Carlos Sanz. You understand? Nicely done for those people who very Spanish of you. Yeah, yeah well, I, I got I told mean, off by him. That's why I had to say it like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so basically, Verge has been running for ten years. We, you know, we are one of the biggest student platforms out there uh, and lifestyle platforms out there. And we have now really, you know, taken our love of F1 amongst other sports that we have, but F1 to another level by getting these bad boys in. Dave, who's missing at the moment, but you Where are you, see Dave? Him. Where are you? You know, he's the big dog. We're, we're, we'll be, you'll be seeing him in the show. But um, guys, like, tell, tell the people a little bit about yourself. Sam, please, yourself. Cool. Uh, I, my name's Sam, Sam Wilson. Uh, I've known Andre for what, two, two years, two, three years two, two years too long. Too long. Exactly. Too Don't long. tell him everything. I'll try not to. Um, <laughs> so in terms of my involvement in Formula One, I've been a fan since I was, you know, well, I am short, but this big. Um, so my dad got me into the sport, uh, took me down to Silverstone to watch qualifying when I had my big ear defenders on because you know, it was big 10 era back then. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I've been into Formula One. I've followed it my entire life, and I'm a bit of a nerd. I follow every race of the season. And yeah, Andre told me, yeah, like a year ago you were working with F1. Yeah, we've had this plan for a little while now. Yeah. But um, yeah, now we've, we've finally, get this, finally got, got this rolling. In the room. Now we've got the other big dog in here. Wow. I like that. Big dog. That's <laughs> just the first time. And hope, you know, thank you very much. For won't be the you last. Know, thank you for having us here. Um, so yeah, I'm, well, I'm Matt. Um, I've, be, I've had the great privilege of being able to, to film and chat to many interesting um, F1 personalities. Um, as, a, as a video maker, um, I've spent the last season and a half around the likes of um, Charles Leclerc. You can, just leave, yeah. you can just drop yeah. it right there. That's Charles. The show. Thanks for coming, everyone. Yeah. Okay, here we go. That's, that's, <laughs> good, that's good as it gets. <laughs> this is um, a show. We're I, doing I can give you another problem. name. Lewis Hamilton. Whoa. All right. Whoa. All right. All right. World champ. Because you went to... Oh no, I was up in Mercedes Benz World. Uh, Big up Mercedes, great place. And um, where else? Oh, here's a highlight Kimi Raikkonen. Kimi? You wow. actually got words out of him. Did you get him to speak or did you just look at you? Difficult. Difficult. I'm going to say, I, I would like to say he enjoyed it, but I am not too sure. <laughs> I don't, you know, don't know either I way. No one, no one will ever know whether he enjoyed <laughs> it. It's, it's, a, it's, a str it's a struggle to tell when, you know what? This is the highlight right now. Us three together, live and direct, out out, so out of the shard. We're out of the shard, baby. Right. We're, 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 used, safe used from, days. we're safe from coronavirus because that's really the thing that's kicking everything oh off right God. now in the news. Yeah, it is. It's uh, yeah. effective. Well, actually, at the time of recording, which, which uh, Sam is going to get into now, at the time of recording, we don't know... <laughs> <laughs> Whether the Australian first race of the season uh, uh, in Australia, the, the preview show might not be a preview that, show. It yeah, might not be a it's just show. a show. It's, uh, we don't know whether it's actually going to be taken um, going ahead at the moment. So, uh, where are we at at the moment? So, currently, McLaren have pulled out. So they've had one team member test positive for coronavirus. So they put out a statement saying they're not going to race. Um, at, as Andre said, at time of recording, the race is still going ahead, but there has been speculation from two people in F1 who have reported to the BBC that it's not going to go ahead. So this could be the first race of the season affected, but we've already seen stuff with Bahrain kind of removing spectators from the, from the track and also China being postponed and Vietnam potentially on the edge of postponement depending on travel bans. So, so we are, like, at the moment, we're, we're constantly pressing refresh. Yeah. Nothing, on, on <laughs> nothing yet, guys. And there's nothing, there's nothing come about to it. So if you see us like suddenly looking um, every two seconds, which nothing has <laughs> nothing actually yet. been said at time of recording. Each new episode, each new episode is going to be a preview show, pretty much preview, as far as it goes. We don't know when the first race could be, and, and here yeah. we are. So fingers crossed. I think it's a sensible thing right now. Of course, there's still people being tested in and around the paddock. Yep. Yeah. Um. So, you know, quite, thoughts yeah. and prayers and. All that good stuff. Yeah, let me get all my there. selfishness out of the way. Yeah, <laughs> but just like just let's just get the race on. Doesn't matter if they run. Just yeah, but this is a hard, this is a hard thing as an F one fan. It's really difficult because we've I'm sure many of us have already have binge watched through Drive to yeah. Survive. Yes, we've Understood. got to see that and we've got excited and we're, we're thinking, great, here we are. Yeah, F one season is about to start. 
Uh, uh, uh. But you see, I'm at a point now where, don't get me wrong, I want to see a championship kick off, but I, I want to see some racing. So if one or two teams can't take place, let the race go. Just take away the championship points. Well, this is some, yeah, selfish. But it's, it's just like me, selfish. selfish. But also, yeah. <laughs> by, the, by the end of the season, we're going to have a season that's so tight and we're not going to be what doing what we've seen for the past couple of seasons where it's ending in Absolutely. the US and we've seen Lewis... Lewis coming home with the Sixth World Championship last year was great, but I would have loved to have seen it gone up to the last race. Right. You know what I mean? Well, this is something that Ross Brown has said in a recent statement. I mean, if I'm not wrong and mistaken, that he said that, look, if a team does pull out, then the points out of this race wouldn't yeah. go towards the World Championship. Yeah. So, but they've done it before. So as last season when they had the thousandth race, it was the thousandth race, but it wasn't the championship race. It yeah. didn't always start as championship points. So when you look back at the history of F1, there was you know, 10, 15 races of a season, but only six of about five, six of them had points attributed to them. So it's not, it's not anything new. It's just it, I, mean, I mean, I kind of look at it like this. If we relate it to football, it's kind of like the first, the first game of the season where, you know, it doesn't matter really what happens. Everyone just wants to see shiny yeah, new I mean, kids, yeah. new players out. You know, obviously we've been waiting for a long period of time, but obviously health is more important because obviously we want everyone to be okay. Let's just get that out of the way before people write in and be like, you horrible man. <laughs> People are in jeopardy. But, like, we just obviously, we're going to talk about things as if they are going to go ahead. Absolutely. So, let's first of all, let's talk about before we can go forward because sure. we, we don't know where we're going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is let's look back. Drive to survive. Oh. How much did you guys love it? Uh, I loved it so much. I watched the entire season in one day. Um, it's amazing. I think, like, the, the first season was incredible. And, and as, a, as a follow up, it did everything it did everything justice really mm -hmm. uh, i think having mercedes and ferrari in it definitely offered a better perspective of the entire season mm -hmm. um the the show itself has opened up the world of f1 i mean i was out with someone last night who said they'd never seen f1 as a race but they watched the first season of drive to survive and now they can't stop watching f1 it's a good gateway uh, in it's a good gateway and i feel uh, as a show it's done exactly what it intended to do but this season i think yeah elevated there's some key moments in there that i thought were hilarious like Kimmy saying he's just driving for a hobby. I mean, it's unacceptable. Incredible. <laughs> Dre, I mean, Dre, for you, what, what were the highlights? My favorite, I mean, if we're talking about like episodes, my favorite episode was, well, actually, sorry, all, I, I love awkward moments, even though I like mm -hmm. literally watch it through my fingers. Um, the awkward moment was the, uh, I think it was a second to last one on nine when it was a Renault one. And uh, it, was, it was awkward with Cyril oh. and Nico. Uh, Nico on the uh, in the plane when in he's like plane. pretty much asking, for, has he got? Have I got a job? Yeah, there and then, and there was that like awkward yeah. silence. Is he answered no? <laughs> <laughs> they started that episode where Cyril was saying the loyalty to Nico is huge. Yeah. yeah. At the end of the episode, we had to let Nico go. Like, there's a whole there's a whole journey in that episode. Yeah. It's a it's a roller coaster. I mean, for me, I think that my favorite episode is the one with Hass and William's story. Like <laughs> last season with <laughs> Rich Energy dropping Hass. Everyone was kind of a bit like, what, what's going on? Like, where's that come from? And that, that episode addressed it. And, you know, to actually see William's story as part of it, doing the reveal and flying in through a helicopter. I mean, that was just such a... It ended last <laughs> season. And he was like, okay, cool, sure. That's exactly why that happened. And you can see why it became a bit of a difficult one for them. So that was my, my highlight from the season. But I like it. Well, for me, I think... Oh, it's gonna be Alex Albon. I think he, I'm I'm repping the um the Asian team over here. And it's <laughs> a, a big up. We don't we don't have anyone we don't have anyone from the Philippines ever affiliated with F1. But hey, we'll take Thailand. You had, you had one the season before. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll take a, that. A substitute driver. Yeah, wasn't exactly. It? We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll take that. And but I think like any sports fan, you want to be excited by new <coughs> talent. Mm. And uh, you know, I think the story of Alex at the expense of Pierre Gasly is. It is what it is. Like I'm, it's, it's sad for Pierre, but also I'm very excited for Alex. I think he is, he's validated why he got that opportunity, yeah. and he's validated why he's got a seat in 2020. And I think, you know, he's a very humble young lad, very likable young chap, and is a solid racer. You could see when they put the spotlight on him, and all that pressure was on, he pulled it off, and he played well. And you know what? Sure, in Brazil, Lewis robbed him of that podium, but. Yeah. But you know what? You know, let's l this year. I think it's a really, really, really exciting moment for Red Bull, and I think, you know, looking forward, it's a good moment to look at a team like Red Bull because Max was starting to find their stride towards the end yeah. of that season. Alex was starting to get comfortable in that car. Bit of preseason, you know, testing. They could be in a good place. And, and and it looks it looks good for them at the moment. And I think as as you said, like 
Alex is really comfortable in the car now. His, his confidence is up. You know, you can see like, you know, with the little bits of social media that we get to see, he's like really in, in, in feeling at home with the yeah. team now. You know? I, think you, I think you hit the nail right in the head. He's humble. Like yeah. That's exactly it. And he's humble, he's, he, but he's still hungry for success. You know, he had a lot of success in F2 and coming through, I think he was, he went straight into a Toro Rosso seat and did really well. He had like one major accident, uh, what crash, but sitting into that, reg, like going into that Red Bull after Pierre was kind of savagely let go, that's a big seat to fill, especially yeah. when you're racing against Max. And I think like, while he may have not been- Got a whole drone. Yeah, well, he's not got a podium yet. I, yeah. I don't see it as an issue. I think next year he probably has the opportunity to get one or this year even. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's a good one for him. And he's, he's, he's settled into a seat there. So so we're, we're giving you guys a little taste of, of what it's like with, because uh, you know, just, just to explain that this, this show is different from the rest of the normal coverage that you get. Um, we are fans first and foremost, like we are, Really lucky to be able to get absolutely, behind the scenes absolutely. in the in the sport. You know, we were lucky at, at Verge to be able to be the first person to be able to in people you know, to interview. Um, <laughs> he is Verge. I am Verge. Yeah. This guy is Verge. <laughs> we're just here. Let's for be, the let's be real. Around let's now. be I'm real. Have to drag out everyone and around the side. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so we're the first people to be able to get to interview Pierre, for example, after he he was um, uh, put into Toro Rosso. No pressure. I, I know, I know. That's a big one. I, but you know what, to be honest with you, I think uh, at the time, these guys are amazing. Like, so I, I'm not looking to, you know, unlike the journalists in, in the show, trying to get that, you know, horrible headline. Like, I am I want us to be able to celebrate these guys. Now, don't get me wrong, we're not fanboys. We're not going to be, you know, always cheering on everything that they do. We will have opinions as drivers that we, you know, aren't fans of. Um, but we will try to be objective and, 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 you know, fair as possible. So that being said, let's get into something shallow. What is your favourite team kit at the moment? Um, I'm going to have to go with Mercedes. And the reason is, it's that long sleeve shirt that Valtteri wears. Valtteri pulls it oh, off. Oh, Valtteri? Yeah, Valtteri pulls Lord it off. More than Lewis. Yeah. Nice man. I know. Yeah, why not? Lewis Cut. looks good in the black long. Right, long Lewis, when you see him, can you, uh, we're going to bring this up, hey, this hey. little clip. Listen, listen, <laughs> I'm just a, from an outsider point of view. <laughs> I like a white long sleeve t-shirt, that's what I'm saying. But yeah, I think that's brilliant. I think Ferrari have this like zip up wool jumper that you can't seem to buy anywhere, which is really annoying, by the way. Ferrari shout out, if you can say that. Great. Yeah, I think I sent it over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charles uh, Char wore it at the Autosport show, and it looks incredible. I mean, I'm not saying I pull it off as well as he does, because, you know, he's an inc immaculate young man. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Young man. But, yeah, I think um, Mercedes and Ferrari are my two. Also, Ferrari, who can pull off just one solid colour that well? That's true. That's what's, your, what's, what's yours? I'm going, all, I'm going all in on McLaren. I knew you were going to say Blue and orange. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we're bringing a colour here, so I'm just going to say they're mixing together two really dangerous colours that don't work, but you know what? I love that, and I love the look of it, and it just it translates well on a car, it looks well on them. It's just bold, and you know, it's, it's a weird one this season, because I feel like with the car liveries, there's a lot of white going on this year. I don't know if you That's true, yeah. Alpha Tori is the whole situation. I'm keeping an eye on, because I'm, I'm quite... I wear all the different teams' kits, you know, whoever... The Mercedes or so like, Mercedes you know, so right. shout out, just send me whatever you want and I will wear it. Um, now, I for, for me personally, I love, I used to love uh, um, Toro Rosso stuff as well, but obviously they've moved to this new journey that we'll try to... Reincarnate yeah. it, explain that. So well. Mercedes obviously always got the, the, the coolest stuff, but I mean, I am now moving into like liking Ferrari stuff a little bit more. Due this. to Charles what Leclerc. a changed man. Yeah, wow. <laughs> changed man, honestly. You know, I think I think because they don't want anyone around and they don't care about if you wear They're this stuff or not. We're gonna change the name from Andre to Andrea. Yeah, Andrea. That's it, see, I'm trying. I'm trying to get there. So uh, guys, send yeah. me that as well. Invite to Marinello's. <laughs> <laughs> This guy, you've got to see this guy out in Monza at a VIP. He's like, see me how, did all he, red. how did you get that? He's just going to send the first episode straight to Ferrari <laughs> offices, and here we are. Basically, this is this is the Tifosi's exactly. London contingent, by the way. So any fan mail to Ferrari, just bypass. Just, 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 just yeah, straight to the shirt. <laughs> so, thing. so. Yeah, yeah this what are you thinking? Well, yeah, this is it's, it's exciting times. I think what we need to get into is nitty gritty and yes, think who is who's yeah. going to be the top three, who's going to be best at the rest. Well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna let you go first because you are more far more knowledgeable. Teams or drivers? Who can we go first? Let's go drivers. Drivers. All right, cool. 
I think um, Charles Leclerc is going to be a winner this year because, as Matteo Bonotto says, the car isn't as quick this season as it was last. And he's got a four-time world champion up against him. If he can put that car on the podium more times than Vettel can, that's it. I think he's number one driver. I think that's clear cut. So, so are we actually? You're saying that Charles Leclerc is going to be world champion this year? He's going to win the whole thing? Maybe not. Uh, maybe not. Well, in fact, I don't think he'll be world champion. I think he's got a lot to learn. But if he can outrace Seb, which he he's proven last yeah. year that he did quite well, if he can do that consistently this year, I think he's gonna he's gonna be. Favorite. So we're we saying second or third for Charles. Um, Ooh, Max is coming in. I think I'm going to go with third just to be conservative because that car, by the looks of it, isn't that quick. Um, second, I think I think Lando's going to have a good year. He said in pre-race interviews that he's a nice guy and he knows he's a nice guy, but he's still out to fight. You know, And his relationship with Carlos is incredible on screen, on social, but they still compete. And they are still friends, but they have a, a healthy relationship. There's an understanding. Yeah, exactly. Um, and also, I think, as we were saying earlier, I think Albon... Albon this year, you know, he settled into the car the last couple of races of last year. Um, he had he had that almost podium, and I think he's gonna he was that really annoyed him, and I think he's gonna gun for a podium this year, like really gun. Um, in terms of teams, I think Mercedes is gonna top the rankings. Uh, McLaren, I think hopefully can get that fourth place. Racing point, I think, based on the the testing. Interesting, I mean, yeah. Pink Mercedes, not saying nothing. Pink Mercedes. Um, but based on testing, Perez and Stroll both top the sheets. Mm -hmm. So I think as drivers, we know we're like we've seen Stroll on the podium before. Perez has been on the podium before. So I think they've got a lot of potential, and I think that could be the biggest upset at the midfield. If I'm honest, like that. I think it's hard to look past um, Lewis. You know. Yeah. The car. I one. think it's a twenty before the rules change for next season. I think it's, it's a no-brainer. It's, 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 it's a Mercedes again. I think second place is up for grabs. I'm I'm definitely leaning on seeing Max Verstappen in there. Yeah. I think Red Bull just have a have a lot more lot lot more going their way. I think Ferrari has still got a lot to figure out. So for me, Max takes second place and third place could be really interesting to see. I think that is really really up for grabs. I would dare to say it's probably going to be between Alex and um, Charles. I think it's. Yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah. I think. I think Red Bull are actually going to shock a lot of people, and that's going to throw fourth place out, out of the drivers yeah. all over the shop. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be. Uh, it's hard to tell. when I think Renault could shock, and I think maybe this year. Well, I think they need I to. I think. R I think Renault yeah. are going to shock. They're under McLaren. pressure. I think McLaren almost. It was what is a wonderful story to see, and it was amazing to see how McLaren you know raced last season. I think there's a sense for me where it's going to bridge over into overachievement and Renault's going to come and take that fourth slot. I, you know what? I, I haven't really made up my mind on, obviously, I, we, we know that Lewis is, I think yeah. I think that Lewis is going to win. I want him to win. Now, let me give new people who are just recently into Formula One a tip. Don't follow or don't focus on who's going to win the race because more than likely it's going to be either Mercedes, Red Bull, or Ferrari, usually. I would say look at the midfield. So the midfield is is more so more interesting. So that's what got me more into it. Where where And also, more than likely, actually, the, the battle between um, Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc, because they yeah. really don't like each other. And, and last year, they were going at it to and fro. You know. And then also, the, the battle between Ferrari's um, two drivers themselves, Seb and, and, and Charles yeah, as well. Yeah, interesting this season because so that hit at some hot points. Exactly. So, so I mean, that's why, it, you know, that particular episode was my favourite because of <laughs> that was like, there's beef there. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, I don't like team orders. I don't like it when someone's just there as a backup driver. I, I like teams that just allow both races, uh, drivers just to race. Yeah. Um, so that's why with Mercedes, it is a bit of a, sometimes a bit of a snore fest because pretty much... You know, Vato Bottas is not really doing anything to be able to challenge Lewis. The last actual challenge he had with with an equal car was obviously, you know, Nico. And then look what happened. I'm just saying that. I'll leave that there. <laughs> so so what I would say is that I think it's really important for, for people to be able to look at the smaller teams, midfield. That's really the interesting part of, of and I think there's one thing this year that's going to be really good is looking at Renault. Renault, they've got Esteban off gone back. Yes. He's had a year out. What a guy. We know that Esteban, like on, on a Saturday in qualifying, Esteban Ocon is basically unstoppable. Like he got a third place in Spa in the rain last year. Like not last year, the year before. Amazing qualifier. Danny Rick, 
great race pace, right? So we've got, I feel we're going to have Esteban higher up the grid, and yeah. we're going to have another inter-team battle there, but also we're going to have that team battle further down the, the midfield. So those two as Renault drivers can really take it to McLaren. I think that is going to be an interesting battle, but then Race and Point are going to come in and do the same thing. So there's going to be a three-way battle, I think. And I think these kind of battles are going to be really, really important and interesting. And kind of to come to our final topic is there's a lot of amazing battles coming up mm-hmm. and that's going to lead into 2021. There's a lot of contracts and a lot of seats up for grabs. And there's not many. you got you got, you got Charles, you got Max, um, you've got Ocon. Ocon's got a contract. Yeah. So and you've got Stroll and Perez. I think that's Stroll, five yeah. drivers. Well, Stroll ain't going nowhere. Well, Stroll's not going anywhere. Dad, <laughs> so. Daddy owns Dad can I leave? No, you're <laughs> saying, son. <laughs> also, you're that's grounded. Also, I mean, Aston Martin's coming back in 2021 yeah. as well. Yeah, Aston that's Martin. supposed to be a rename. So there's a little yeah. rumour there about... Mercedes what would be the bit? What do we think is going to be the biggest shock name move if there is going to be? I, th- I, I think that Ricardo is going to move. I, I just don't think they've got the car yeah. to be able to to fulfill it's his ambitions. So I I've always predicted. I mean, obviously we'll go more into this in, in the, the podcast that, that um, we're going to put the links to down below. But um, where, do you I, want to, where do you want to see him? I I personally would like to see him go to Ferrari. I like that because Daddy I really? think yeah because I think that Vettel is going like to retire. That. I w- Once I it's established that Charles is Charles yeah. is t- you know Charles is the the faster and um, you know racer. I would prefer to see him to go to Mercedes, and I'd like to see Hamilton go to Ferrari because you can't. can't I like that strong I fantasy like that. booking. Yeah. I feel like the Ferrari is the heritage of Formula One, and you can't become a world champion six times, potentially seven times, and then not finish your career with the oldest team in the book. Like just it's, even if it's a season. But what about George Russell? Mercedes he's contracted. He's, he's, he's at Williams. He's contracted. Yeah, so, so. Well, he, I, I think he can move. Can he move after I next season? I this season, I think. There may be a clause. But I think we'll have to double check. I'm sure people will tell us. Yeah, you, we may be wrong. Um, but yeah, I, I just think. I think personally, there's lots of people to look at. But guys, you have to be looking, looking at Renault. Yes. Because when that, ha- when if they don't fulfill his object, is is I think he wanted to have a, like a podium or two. Yeah. Um, I think he wants to be a contender. He yeah. moved there to be a contender. I think if you look at the, the actual uh, snippets on Drive to Survive, he mentions McLaren a lot because he turned them down to go to Renault. Yeah. And I think he was quite regretting it because he saw that McLaren was going from so much strength to strength. I think there's pressure on Cyril like like no other. Big pressure. Um, so, and, and, <laughs> and like for the other teams, being honest, it's like a free hit of a year because yeah. obviously the reg- reg- regulations change next yeah. year. And um, but I think for them to keep him, and I'm and I actually want him to move personally because he's one of my yeah. favorite drivers. Also, for for those of you who don't know, in Formula One, kind of when the teams start to change, they call it silly season. Yeah. But yep. this, so next year, the end of 2020 is going to be the biggest silly season we've seen in like three, four years. There's so many drivers up for the contract that uh, ends. That like so many changes. There's drivers that like Esteban Ocon that had a year out. Nico Hulkenberg left this year. Is he going to come back next? I would year? love that. I'd come back, Nico. Come I miss back. Hulk. He was, he was very pleasant. He was very pleasant when we met him. He's a nice he's guy. A he's a really a nice driver. guy. He's a very he's nice a guy. Driver. So, guys, you know, thank you for watching. Um, now, Dave, uh, you know, Dave is going to be giving his. I don't know. I'm, I'm, lose, I'm lost for words. What he's going to be saying. The fourth member. He's, the go, yeah, he's the, ghosted the, us the, in the, this the episode. Big man, the big man. He's going to be giving you all of his tips. Who he thinks is going to win. Best outfits. You know, all of these types of things. So it's going to come up after. But guys, yeah, just uh, let us know what you think. We're going to continue to do this, giving you real coverage from real fans, you know, and luckily enough, we're going to get some nice access from Formula One. Love you, Formula One. Um, Cheers, to, uh, you know, to, to be able to speak to the drivers so forth, and then we'll just keep on uh, we'll know, keep doing we're, it. We're going to keep previewing till we get a race. So <laughs> hopefully the next time you see us, we have a race. Might be us running around the track. <laughs> some, cra- some crazy stuff could happen. We could have Lance Stroll on pole. We don't know what's going to happen. I'm just going to say, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Australia madness, here we come. If it doesn't happen... We'll see you at Bahrain, I guess. Let's Bahrain. do it. Well, we won't see anyone there because there's no. no spectators, but we'll see you on TV coverage. So have a look Have a look out for the podcast. We're going to do this weekly and just uh, updates and chatter and our opinions and laughter and jokes yeah. about everything all, all in Formula 1. So thank you guys for watching. Peace. <laughs>